Welcome back to 25 Facts You Didn't Know About Smite. This is episode 4 of a mini-series, so if you haven't checked out the first 3 parts, then you should definitely do that after this one for some other awesome facts, like how you can get 1300 magical protections at once. But without further ado, let's jump in with part 4. Fact number 1. With the season 4 update changing the active system into the relic system that we know today, Hyrus had planned on adding two additional relics to the arsenal that never actually got into the full build of the game. Those being Greek Fire, a reverse Hand of the Gods effect that would execute up to three minions in your immediate area to help slow clear gods get an advantage, and the Other World Key, which was sort of a Yanis portal effect but on a relic, which will create a one-way gateway between two points that opened after a short delay and you and your team could travel through it. Both very interesting ideas, it would be cool to see why these were never implemented. Fact number two, you used to get a passive goal per five increase for destroying enemy towers back in closed beta. It's not clear whether this was on top of the base gold you got for killing them or as a replacement, but still, that would be crazy for snowballing, as if it was a large amount of gold per five, like even if you ended up with five extra gold per five per player for each tower, that's 300 gold per minute that you're getting extra for doing nothing basically. Maybe that's why it was removed and the base value was added, unless it was on top of the base value. If anyone who is playing in that era is watching, then let everyone know down below. Fact number three. This one might reach new heights for this series in terms of useless but interesting facts, but of the total of 108 gods we have as of Baba Yaga, 29 of them don't wield a weapon in any way. Most of these are mages that throw projectiles like Saul or Merlin, or others that use claws or fists like Mercury or Fenrir. Fact number four. Before Hell's minor kit rework in the closed beta of Smite, using an ability in one stance put the same ability in the other stance on cooldown, similar to how Merlin's blink ability works now. And bonus fact about Alpha Hell, her light stance 1 used to be a channeled healing beam, similar to Nox's 1 but for allies. Fact number 5. On a similar note, Ymir's ultimate used to detonate regardless of if he died or not, where now you can kill him and if he doesn't activate the ult before he dies, it's wasted and does nothing. Back then he could just charge it as a kamikaze move and when he died it would nuke everyone in the area for a thousand damage. And I'm adding this in after recording this video because Ymir's ult was actually changed recently to work this way once again. I guess old habits die hard. Fact number 6. The Siege game mode was actually introduced as a 5v5 map and an alternative to Conquest that was a bit more casual. The idea was two duo lanes and a jungler, but it was quickly found that it was much more fun and chilled out with just four players on each team and no jungler, and thus we've had 4v4 Siege for the last few years. Fact number 7. Before the advent of Talaria boots and Traveller shoes, the fourth set of boots for each damage type were Midas boots and Midas shoes. Simply having these boots gave you additional gold per 5 seconds. The stats they gave however were much worse than other boots options to balance them out and they were mostly bought by supports to keep up in gold. Of course, this kind of effect is now given by Evolved Guardian's Blessing. Fact number 8. This is Old Hebo, or Lieutenant Flappy Sleeves as he was affectionately known by the Smite community back then. Fact number 9. At one point during Smite's beta phase, a 10v10 arena mode was planned and in development. This would basically be a normal arena match but with 20 players instead of 10. Sounds kind of insane. Personally, I think this could be a good idea to make arena more unique. Maybe not 10v10, but perhaps 6v6 to differentiate it from other modes. Apparently this was scrapped during development due to server load issues though. Maybe it could come back today as an adventure or something like that. Fact number 10. Cupid, Ratatoska, and Nejar all have female voice actors despite being male gods in game. Yes, Nejar is a male, stop arguing about it. Fact number 11. The season 3 arena map featured four statues of Roman counterparts of Greek gods. Roman and Greek mythologies were closely linked and often had gods that were very similar. Diana, the counterpart to Artemis, Mars, the Roman Ares, Saturn, who is linked with Cronus, and finally, Venus, who was the Roman counterpart to Aphrodite. Fact number 12. Despite its actual name being Colossal Fury, the name for Vamana's ultimate ability in the game files of Smite is actually Vamana underscore Big Baby. I'll let you figure out why that's the case. Fact number 13. As of the recording of this video, Heimdallia is the only god to have an ability that can change its cooldown based on how you use it. Fact number 14. Fafnir is the god with the most total CCs in his kit. He has a stun and slow on his 1 and a disarm on his 3, and then a stun and slow on his dragon form 1 and a stun and disarm on his dragon form 3, for a grand total of 7 different CCs. Yamoja and Poseidon are close runners up however, with 6 total CCs in their kit. Fact number 15. The most common CC in Smite is slows, with a total of 77 occurrences in Smite's god roster, followed up by stuns at 56 and knockups at 40. Fact number 16. 
The least common CCs in Smite are Polymorphs, Madness and Intoxication, all of which only have two occurrences in all of Smite. This is followed by Disarms, Trembles, Blinds and Fears that all have three occurrences. Fact number 17. There are a few abilities in the game that can bypass the normal cap of 40% magical penetration. Vulcan's turret is one of them. These abilities have inherent percent penetration built into them which applies regardless of how much penetration you've built and can bypass the normal cap. There are also physical examples such as Kali or Izanami's passives, but there's actually no way to reach the cap for physical penetration anyway with current items, so it's not that relevant. Fact number 18. This however is not true for flat penetration granting abilities such as Thanatos' Scent of Death. This ability grants 35 flat penetration, but this will only help you up to the cap of 50 flat pen. If you already have 50 flat pen in your build, the penetration from this ability will literally do nothing for you. It's a hard cap. Fact number 19. Guardians have the highest average CCs in Smite, with an average of 3.79 different CCs on each god in the Guardian roster. Followed by Warriors at 3.12, Hunters at 2.74, Assassins at 2.24, and pulling up in last place we have Mages with 2.21 average CCs per god. Fact number 20. The longest gap in releasing a god for a class in Smite is the 1 year, 6 months and 26 day gap between Chernobog and Heimdallia's release. Chernobog was released on May 15th 2018, and Heim was released on December 11th 2019. Fact number 21. The shortest CC in the game is the root on Osiris' ultimate, at a base 0.4 seconds. Interestingly, this also means that CCR and diminishing returns have no effect on the duration of the root whatsoever, because those effects can only reduce a CC down to 0.5 seconds and not lower. Since this ability already starts at less than 0.5 seconds, they simply have no effect. Fact number 22. The longest CC in the game, excluding items like Gem of Isolation or Frostbound Hammer, is Ares Shackles that can cripple someone for up to 8 seconds if you maximise the time on each chain and wait between them. Fact number 23. There was a bug in the game a while back where if you hit an enemy god with Hercules 2 and Poseidon 1 at the same time, they'd be flung backwards about 3 times the normal distance that Herc 2 would move them. This has since been patched out of the game though and is no longer possible. Fact number 24. Back in Smite's early beta stages, you could carry multiple jungle buffs on one player at the same time. This led to some pretty crazy stuff at the time, the scariest of which was Odin with both the protections and health buffs stacked onto him. These two buffs gave 50 of each protections and extra health regen respectively, but were removed from the game before the end of beta. And finally, fact number 25. When changing Anubis, the Smite dev team accidentally added an extra zero on the end of the scaling value of his ultimate, causing it to hit for thousands of damage per tick with a late game build. Needless to say, this was patched very quickly as it would insta-kill pretty much anything, including Fire Giant and Titans, and you thought Anubis ult hits hard now? But that's it for another 25 interesting facts you didn't know about Smite. If you enjoyed or learned something, don't forget to drop a like before you leave, and if you have any other suggestions for facts that weren't in this or the previous three videos, then leave them down below. Speaking of, you should check out the first three parts if you haven't seen them yet, there's some cool facts in there. But that's about it from me. Catch you guys later. Have a great day, stay safe, and peace out you nerds.